Hello and welcome to the 3D printed classroom. Um, this is lesson four, I believe. Um, possibly five, I don't know, I kind of lost track. Um, I'm making a bunch of these videos in a row because I, I fell behind. Anyway, so we have been, uh, with the engineering design process, we had our interviews with the clients, um, we defined the problem, and now we're moving on to uh, the second stage, which is learning about the problem. Uh, our learning targets for this lesson are uh, I can research possible solutions to my client's problem and I can investigate solutions that already exist for my client's problem. Now, um, I include this because um, for a couple reasons. One is um, we don't want to like totally steal somebody's idea, but we don't want to unnecessary. We don't want to do uh, more work than we need to. Um, there's probably a better way to phrase that. Um, essentially, um, if we are going to recreate something similar that somebody else has done, and we can learn from their design or improve on their design, uh, we should be doing that. We were reading a um, we we're reading about Thomas Edison, and he said. Uh, a quote like I never pick something up without thinking about how I can improve it and so there are going to be solutions um, you know there's like nothing new under the sun and just because there aren't there are already solutions doesn't mean that we can't make those solutions better or make them more appropriate for our clients so um, this is one that uh, I enjoy quite a bit oops uh, and so I have kids do find this here I gotta switch arms my arms getting tired so um, I have my students um, mostly working on their own they the eighth grade mentors are gonna take over that they're gonna lead most of it but they get on their Chromebooks and they start uh, searching possible solutions for these problems um, if the person needs a desk organizer they go on Amazon and they start looking at what desk organizational solutions there are. If somebody needs a way to uh, organize file folders, they get on Amazon or um, Staples uh, or any other type of like uh, office supply store and see what, what exists already. Uh, one of the clients on this round has, they want a way to be able to um, hold their laptop without holding it so that they can type as they walk around the school to make observations of people. And so, um, I mean, that, that's like kind of an insane idea, but the kids are going with it, they're excited about it. And there are like harnesses that people have or like moving carts that people have that already exist. So how can we make those ideas better for our clients? Um, this really is uh, kind of a brief um, activity we but um, I showed this document last year I think I have it in my Google Drive um, or I'm sorry last uh, the previous uh, video uh, where they uh, write down their client and their problem they've identified criteria and constraints and then they fill out this um, this it's a fairly small box but it's just writing down the idea so like what have you found that could be a solution? What possible solutions already exist or what possible solutions could you use and alter for your client? So uh, this is like a super short lesson. It's a super short video. Welcome to lesson, I've lost count, six of the engineering and design process. Uh, we are moving uh, from define, we, we're at define. We started that with um, our client interviews, uh, learning the problem. We did that in the previous video. Check that out. Um, and now we are moving on to plan. We are going to start planning our design. Uh, so our learning targets for this portion are, I can state how to begin a design. I can use the information from an interview to start my design. So, um, They've researched, they got like a few ideas kind of bubbling in their heads and now they are, um, they're moving on and we're going to start our design process. And so um, the first thing that I want students to do, like we're eager to get back onto Tinkercad. Um, we've done some activities there. We know what the problem is. Let's just get on there, Mr. McInerney. But 
that's not going to happen. You got to pump the brakes um, because the way we are going to start designs is the way uh, most designs are started, and that is on pencil and paper or, you know, digital uh, digital drawing. But everything starts as a, a sketch or a drawing. And so what we do is uh, I found some examples of design drawings um, like this. Uh, this is an electric kettle, and we see it from multiple angles. And I have the I ask the kids uh, like what what can they learn about this illustration and so they point out like well there's like a uh, there's a window right there so you can see how much water there is there are these buttons where you can uh, affect the temperature um, kids notice well I can see that there's a spout right there and there's uh, well maybe those are uh, temperature settings or maybe even volume settings and so we just see like what information we can glean from this uh, from these sketches um, next up we go, uh, I show them this, which is a, a sketch of a dress. Um, there were, I had to redo these illustrations, but um, the kids, they point out, well, it's a very long dress, you know, that would take, uh, it's, you know, goes all the way to the floor. Maybe this is like a little wedding ring. Uh, some kids remarked that maybe it's a, uh, maybe it's a wedding ring. Somebody thought, well, maybe it's a dress form. Um, somebody's mom is uh, a seamstress and so they notice, well, no, like I've seen this before. Um, here, I can clear that. They said, well, I've seen this thing, this shape before. And my mom, when she sews stuff, um, she, she sews it on this like mannequin like thing. And so uh, they thought, well, maybe this is a design for a mannequin, not so much a dress. Um, and then we go to this, we have this chair or many chairs and this one I really like because this is um, many different versions of like a single chair. You know, I mean, like this is a one person, a one person chair. And we have like all of these different iterations, one where it's hollow on the bottom, where that's filled out, where the seat becomes the legs, where the legs are separate, where we have these like the dimpled buttons. I don't know what those are called, but we have like, you know, they're all variations on one kind of theme, which are these sort of like curved, uh, this curved seat uh, with everything sort of like rounded and sleek and modern. I don't know if that's modern or not. Um, but the, the, the emphasis being that we have to start sketching out our ideas. Uh, it's not about uh, ex sketching things exactly as they should be, but how we imagine that they could be. Um, which actually leads in well to the next lesson. This is going to be a double one. Um, and so we're still in the planning phase. And um, so we, we work, I work with the students and we try to narrow down what design that we actually would like to choose. That brings me to uh, the next lesson. And we are still in the planning stages. Um, with those previous lessons, I mean, like the students have talked about solutions, they've sketched out solutions, and now they have to whittle it down to a single solution. And so uh, the learning target uh, for this one is uh, I can create an accurate drawing. And um, so I made, oh, I, oh no, I lost it. All right. So um, I talk about accuracy being uh sort of like two things. Um, there is the, there is like photorealistic accuracy. Like this is a sketch of a child and it looks very realistic. That's uh, that's very accurate. But then there is the accuracy in measurement. And we are going for the latter. We're going for something that is uh, accurate in terms of measurement because we are going to be using this drawing as a reference when we get into Tinkercad and start creating a design. And so, my, you know what, I might actually, I'm just going to kind of walk through how I do this one. I have to, I have to switch my hands because I'm left-handed. Um, but I have something like, you know, I'm, I want um, this thing is like a circle. And I talk about, well, that's not really, that doesn't really look like a circle. In terms of circles, that's not a very accurate circle. And then, well, there's going to be this rod thing and that's a straight rod even though 
it's curved and even though it's larger on one end than it is the other. And then I'm gonna do a cube because it's gonna go into the cube. And well, that's not a very accurate cube, but I can make this an accurate illustration. You know, I have, uh, well, I can add my dimensions, all right? So I'm gonna add the dimension here and this is going to be, you know, five centimeters. And it's a it's a cube, so all of these the all of the faces have to be the same. So that's going to be five centimeters. And then I'll have the height be five centimeters. And all right, so that's good. And then I'll have well I'll have the overall length of this be a measurement. And I mean that's quite long. We'll say that that's ten centimeters. And then we have. Um, it's 10 centimeters long, and then I'm actually gonna go on each end. I'm going to note that it is five millimeters. So even though my illustration is like quite crummy, you can see based on, on, on my measurements that I've like laid out that yeah, this this is thinner down here than it is over there, but it's at, it's it's it has some accuracy to it. I know that when I draw this out in Tinkercad, I have to make sure that that cylinder is five millimeters on both ends. I'm not I'm not messing around with something else. Now here I have this like uh, my oval, and so I'm gonna just I'm gonna put a diameter right there. I'm gonna say that that's a diameter of. What number am I writing? Uh, 20 centimeters. Uh, that's, <laughs> that is very inaccurate, but I, I'm, I'm committing to it. And then this one is also 20 centimeters. So I wanna make sure that kids know like this is not about creating a beautiful drawing. It's about creating a referential drawing, something that I can use in order to create a three-dimensional rendering of this. And the best way that I can make a good and accurate three-dimensional rendering is to make sure that my sketch is accurate in the measurements. So um, that's actually, I am now all caught up. I am uh, I'm kind of excited and uh, hopefully I can um, actually release these uh, or film these uh, at a better schedule. So um, thanks for watching. If you wanna share it, that'd be uh, really great. Uh, if you have any questions, you can leave them below. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Toodaloo.